Thank you, everybody. So Shout Hard Around the World is an action that we're doing on April 16th, which is Patriots Day here in Massachusetts. I know that some of the other states don't celebrate Patriots Day. Um, so in Bedford, where I live, the two surrounding communities are Lexington and Concord. And for those of you who know your American history, you know that the shot heard around the world occurred in, in Concord, and then they marched to Lexington, and we had the Rev American Revolution, and here we all sit now as Americans. Bedford is in the middle of that. The t history textbooks leave us out. They actually had to go through Bedford to get to Lexington from Concord. And so last year in September, said with a proper Boston accent, an article came out in the local paper about how Hanscom Air Force Base, which is situated in the middle of Bedford, Concord, Lexington, and Lincoln, Massachusetts, um, that they are going to be the Nuclear com Command and Control Center, one of them, and there's several in, this, in the United States. And this threw up every red flag in my head because it came out in the Wicked Local, which is like a patch. It's a, a, lo a small local newspaper that's online only. So you didn't see it in the Boston Globe, you didn't see it in the New York Times, you didn't see it in any of the large newspapers, you only saw it in the one local paper. And I was just horrified because Hanscom, back in the, in the 80s, Hanscom's been around for a while, but back in the 80s, um, there was a lot of movement with the freeze movement, insane movement in Bedford, because they knew that Hanscom, which houses Raytheon and now Draper and Lockheed Martin and several of the other weapons manufacturers, the, the residents of Bedford and Concord and Lexington and the, and the surrounding communities knew what was happening on Hanscom had a lot to do with nuclear command and control. They didn't want that. So there was a lot of action around the freeze movement in Bedford in the 80s. And for me, that's when I was in junior high and high school. So it was like just kind of fluoride in the water to me. You know, like I didn't really take any notice of it until it was gone. And then I was like, oh, I get it now what they were trying to do. So when I saw this in the local paper and I thought to myself, what happened to our movement in our communities? It's, it's aged. A lot of it's died off, unfortunately. And I'm in my 40s, and we have more people here who are in college than we have who are in their 30s, 40s in this audience. Right, so where are the people my age? Well, they're at soccer practice and they're, you know, taking their kids here, there, and everywhere. They're too busy with their families to worry about, you know, a nuke dropping on their heads. But when I talk to my friends and my family who live in the community and I tell them what's going on, they're all horrified. They're like, oh my God, I had no idea that this was going on here. And so what I'm trying to do is to kind of rebuild that and re-tap into that energy that was there in the 80s, because I know that we really genuinely care about getting blown up by a nuclear weapon, and none of us want that to happen. But the problem is, is that Concord and Lincoln and Lexington are extremely wealthy communities. Bedford is kind of like the redheaded stepchild. You know, when you can't afford to live in, in Concord, you move to Lexington, and when you can't afford Lexington, you move to, oh my god, Bedford, I can't believe you have to live in Bedford. So. A lot of people who make a lot of money, who are, if they're not one percenters, they're like maybe five percenters, live in these communities, and this is where their money comes from. This is how they make their livings. This is how they buy their McMansions and their houses down on the Cape and the, the trips that they take to Bermuda or, or Europe or whatever. So when we're focusing on Hanscom, we're focusing on our neighbors, and we're, we're challenging their livelihoods, which makes it really difficult for me sometimes because they're small communities. It's not like I live in Cambridge where you have, I don't know how many people live here. 110,000 people. Right. We don't have 110,000 people. You walk around in Bedford or Concord or Lincoln has a population of 6,000, I think. Bedford is like 13,000. Right, we're small communities, so we run into each other all the time. I don't do a lot of organizing in my own backyard because I live there. I don't get to fade away into the city like you do here in Boston or DC or New York or wherever it is that you live. So this was really very much outside of my personal comfort zone to organize in literally my backyard. And what I chose to do is to, to, ride, the to ride the coattails 
of the shot heard around the world. And what I've been planning since September is the shout heard around the world. And it is a shout for nuclear disarmament. It is a shout that we do not want our communities to be funded by the military industrial complex, that we would prefer the people's budget that would fund all of the things that we care about. One of the biggest problems that we have in my area is traffic. And with the, those of us who live in Boston saw an article in the Globe a week or two ago about how our traffic is literally getting worse because our unemployment is down to 3.5%, which is the lowest it's been in like 10 years or something. And we have 300,000 new people who have moved to the state. So our traffic has increased exponentially, but guess what? The T doesn't work any better than it did 10 years ago. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. And to get here this morning, I can take the bus from my house to Alewife. However, because I live out in the suburbs, the bus only runs from 6 in the morning till 8 at night, Monday through Friday. I could not get here in time taking the tea. I had to drive in. Yesterday, or the day before, I also had to drive in and sit in traffic for an hour and 15 minutes, although I live 11 miles away. An hour and 15 minutes I sat in traffic because I wasn't getting out of work until 9 o'clock at night and the last bus leaves at 8. So I want public transportation funded not only for my own personal convenience but because I want to reduce traffic for everybody and I want to reduce climate change and I want to invest in things that I care about like, you know, public uh, transportation. So what we've decided, to, what I decided to do, what we decided to do, was to do this shout heard around the world. And we're doing it on April 16th, which is Patriots Day. And what we're doing is we're talking about nuclear disarmament and the amount of money that it's cost. And so for two minutes, we are going to stand, we're going to do a flash mob. For those, who knows what a flash mob is? Oh good, a lot more people than I anticipated. Uh, there was a big discussion about whether I even use the word flash mob on our uh, flyer, which is this one. For, it's in your packets for everybody, because a lot of people who are over 60 don't know what a flash mob is. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to do a flash mob. And for two minutes, we are going to stand silently frozen. And we're going to be holding signs that say things like um, nuclear disarmament now. And we're, we're doing this, this silent flash mob for a few reasons. We chose two minutes for a few, few reasons. First of all, it is a hat tip to the work that the nuclear freeze community did in the 80s, that we're going to be frozen, like the freeze movement. Two, the doomsday clock is now at two minutes. Right? And the third reason, what's my third reason? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. So anyways, it's happening on noon. It's, we're going to gather at noon in front of the um, First Parish in Lexington, which is the UU. We're going to freeze for two minutes at 12.58 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then from there, we're going to uh, walk three miles from Lexington Center to Hanscom Air Force Base, where we're going to um, have some civil disobedience. So any of you who are interested in getting arrested, I would love to have you come talk to me, because that's what we're going to be doing. We've been working closely with the police, the Lincoln Police, town population of 1,000, annual income of over a million. And um, one of the questions that they asked us that we thought was a really strange question was, are there going to be guns there? Yes. And I said, no, we're peace activists. And they said, oh. And I go, your demographic are going to be people who are 60, 70, 80, 90 years old who have been working on this since the 50s. And all the police officers went, they were baffled. They were completely baffled that, that this wasn't going to be Antifa or some sort of white nationalist group, that we are a bunch of peace activists that have been around for the last 70 years. So um, I would love to have people who are under the age of 60 besides myself. So if you are interested in coming and joining us, please come see me. It's up on our website. Um, if you don't want to get arrested, I understand that. If you do want to get arrested, I'll love you even more. That's about it. <laughs>